Hey guys, so somebody just asked me if I could um, take a look at the numbers on this property that's posted on Bigger Pockets. So uh, this will be uh, just an exercise only on on how I would quickly run the numbers. Uh, it's not on MLS, so I'm going to have pretty limited information in this post that you see on the screen. Um, we'll have to do a little bit of homework to dig up um, information on taxes and, and things like that. So the first thing I did was look up this address um, in Gardner. This is actually 474 Main Street in Gardner. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So the first thing I would do is browse over to Bigger Pockets and get a new um, a new analysis going. So for those with pro or premium, you can do this as much as you'd like. Um, if you don't have it, uh, you're limited, I think, to like five times um, before you have to use the team login. So if you need that, let me know. 474 Main Street, Gardner. We're gonna have to double check some info because it's two buildings. It's a three unit and a two bit and a two unit on one lot. So it might pull in the wrong information from public record. We will take a look. Um, I don't actually think there's an asking price on this thing. Yeah, I don't see an asking price here. Five unit, we're paying about a hundred thousand uh, per unit at the most, um, and that, that's if it's in pretty good condition. So, for the sake of this exercise, we'll just call it five hundred thousand. Um, it's a commercial property; it's it's more than four units, so um, closing costs would be a little bit higher. Typically, we use about ten thousand dollars as a placeholder. This will cover um, things like uh, the commercial appraisal, um, any bank related closing costs your attorney's uh, attorney writing title um, and those types of costs just to actually just to actually acquire the property so i'll just use that as a placeholder again i don't i don't i try not to overthink um the first pass in these numbers the idea is to get a rough idea of are we even in the ballpark or are we way off if we're in the ballpark we can refine these numbers if they were asking five hundred thousand, and uh the numbers were a little too tight you know, we could work that purchase price down to figure to kind of reverse engineer what we think a good price to offer would be. So again, this is just for the, this is just for, for practice. It's not, um, it may or may not be a good example. Um, our down payment on a property like this is really probably, it's going to be about 25%. There are some banks that will do 20% on commercial buildings, but 25% is more common on a five plus unit multifamily. Rates right now are Commercial rates right now, we're seeing term sheets as low as 4.7%. We're also seeing 5.25%. So again, for the sake of this conversation, would be 5%. Points are probably going to be um, about a half a point. So again, <clears throat> this is a loan origination fee the banks, commercial banks charge as a percentage of the loan amount. So 0.5 represents a half a percent of the loan amount is charged as a loan origination fee to the bank that's paid at closing. Loan will put over 30 years, may or may not be amortized over 25 or 30 years. It's pretty easy to get 30 year amortizations right now. Um, gross monthly income. Again, I'm going to try to keep this short. I'm just going to use what they have in the um, in the post. So we're going to add, I just split out individual. Instead of doing one lump sum, I'm splitting it out to the five units. So I'll just unit one. You don't have to do this. I'm doing this, you know, it just saves you time not to do this, but um, for the sake of this exercise, I'm going I'm to split it up. So we have two tenants at will at 550 and 600, which my goodness are very low. And then they've estimated the vacant units. So we need to be careful with this. 1100, 1100 and 950. So again, we'll just plug these in as provided. We're gonna, if you were really doing this, you would wanna uh, check these numbers against um, by unit size, by bedroom counts and unit size and unit condition against what people are actually getting for rent. Well, that'll be in a different video, but we'll, we'll use this uh, just to keep this quick. Property taxes, this seems low. And I believe I was doing a little bit of homework on the assessor's site. I believe it's because 
474 Main is listed as a three family occupancy three. It's just the front building that sits on Main Street. There's a, a two unit behind and I, I quickly couldn't find if that's another address. It's supposedly on the same lot. So what I think is this, this tax bill is low because I think it's just for the three unit. Again, this is a relatively complicated example. Usually it's pretty straightforward. You go to the assessor's database and see what the tax bill was for the prior year. You could look up the tax rate for the current year. You could get a pretty good estimate of what the tax bill is gonna be for this year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this up from 3,900 to 5,500 annual to include the two unit. Again, this could be off by almost $1,000. We'd have to do more homework if we were really interested in this property. Commercial insurance on this type of building is probably going to be twenty-five to three thousand dollars. Again, I just know that from getting a lot of insurance quotes. Repairs and maintenance. It's an older New England style building. It seems to need a bit of work. I'm going to do at least five percent repairs, five percent vacancies, five percent capital expenditures. You may want to increase this. Um, and then management fees. If I wasn't going to manage this myself, this could be anywhere from six to eight percent. Uh, I'll split the difference if it's seven percent. Common area electric. Again, I know almost nothing about this building because it's not on MLS. It's just all I have is what I'm working on in this in this image here. All separate utilities. So I'm assuming tenants pay for for each um, unit's utilities. I'm going to assume there's probably a common electric meter. It's probably only twenty five, maybe twenty bucks a month, maybe even less than that, depending on what's hooked up to it. Smoke detectors, basement, things like that. There's probably no common gas. There almost never is, unless it's for um, like a hot water tank for hot corn off laundry. Uh, water sewer is <laughs> almost always paid by the owner, and so um, I I roughly estimate this. Um, so I typically will look at bedroom counts video. So what I'll do is I'll assume, and I don't even have bedroom counts on this building, but um, actually we can get it from the assessor's card. 9 plus bedrooms. So we'll assume it's 9. Well, no, this is just a 3 unit. So we'll assume that's 9 bedrooms and then the other ones maybe have 1 or 2 based on those rent amounts. And so what I would do is, you know, we have 9 bedrooms in the in the 3 unit. And we probably have another three or four, so it's called 13 bedrooms. Um, and I'll typically do, again, utility prices are moving right now. I'll do, I'll do per bedroom, I'll do about $25 a month. So I'd be about $325 a month in water and sewer. And tell that would work out to be about $3,900 for the year. That was three hundred and twenty-five dollars. We have no HOA. You may or may not have city garbage. I'll, I would put it here. If, if you're for, for a commercial building, you're going to want to drop a dumpster in most cases. City of Gardner does take curbside trash for for buildings. I believe up to eight units. I'm going to put this here. But again, this is one of those things you need to do diligence to see if you need to privately hire trash or if it's part of your tax bill and you can do curbside bucket um, curbside uh, bin pick up at your at your property also going to add um snow and landscaping and i'm going to add pest control i would always do pest control in building this this size pest control for a building this size is going to be about a hundred dollars a month so it's 1200 bucks for the year and then snow and landscaping could easily be that although it doesn't look like there's much of a yard um, this could easily be 150 or even 200 dollars uh, but i'll put a hundred dollars uh, for now, but these are the types of things you want to think about. Does it have a big parking lot? Uh, does it have a big yard? How is that going to influence my maintenance costs? And so you'd put these, you'd put those types of costs here in these um, extra line items. And then I would do finish analysis. Let me scroll up to the top. As you can see, again, we've made a lot of assumptions in this in this example. We know nothing about it. We don't know the asking price. We guessed on the tax bill. The rents are super low. Um, you know, we're, we have full-time property manager, it's gonna cash flow $29 a month. So at first blush, that seems pretty bad. Um, but again, 
you know, if you were interested in this building, what you would do is you would dig into, okay, is the purchase price significantly lower than 500,000? Um, <clears throat> are those three vacant units, are those rental estimates, are those accurate? Are they low? Are they high? What would happen if I raised the rents on the two units that are tenant at wills? If I brought those up um, to 900 or $1,000 each, that would boost my total uh, gross rents by um, 800 to $1,000. And so that much of that would flow right to your bottom line. So I wouldn't necessarily just write this property off, but again, at first blush, based on these assumed numbers, it's, you know, it, it's not a slam dunk by any means. You'd really need to look at it with a creative lens um, and, and dial in the numbers, both on the rent side and on the expense side to see if there is a, um, a path to unlock value here, particularly in the first six to 12 months of ownership. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Very, very quick overview, uh, but getting in the habit of running these numbers quickly and just figuring out, you know, again, if you're in the right ballpark or if you're, or if you're pretty far off um, is, a, is a really good habit to get in and helps as you get um, help your clients and as you help analyze properties for yourself. So let me know if you have any questions. All right, thanks.